Hello and welcome back to Grockett's OGTV. This is the GMAT edition, and we are doing some reading comprehension. Let me get my pen here. There we go. <clears throat> um, my name's Jim Jacobson, like it says up in the upper right, taught by Jim Jacobson. That's a picture of me, although I guess it's kind of small, so you wouldn't necessarily be able to tell. And uh, like I said, you're watching Grockett.com. This is the GMAT edition, where we're going through the official guide to the test. Uh, the twelfth edition. So if you're using the eleventh edition, eleventh edition of the OG or older, um, some of the questions will be the same, but I think the pagination will be different, and of course some of the questions will be different. So this really will only make sense if you're using the twelfth edition to the test. Um, we left off um, in the middle of the reading comprehension section last time, and today we're going to do two more passages. We are on page. Let me get that on the screen here. Page three eighty four. And we're on question number 64. And as always, I give you a little bit of time to read the passage around four minutes because that's, uh, I want you to have time to at least uh, read it somewhat thoroughly. And um, I'll take notes during, during that time and you can either do the same or just sit there and wait for me to do it. And then we'll go through the questions as best we're able. So um, I don't have that much else to say about it other than, hey, let's get started.
Okay, we'll stop there. So, um, passage overall is about uh, legal protection uh, versus import competition and how, at least in the U.S., the implementation of those laws has not actually necessarily been to the advantage of U.S. companies. <clears throat> we, we kind of go into more detail about that until we get to the end, where we have um, an example um, of, of a, an outrageous case. So, um, let's take a look at those questions. Oh, and again, it's always worthwhile to consider whether the author is advocating any particular course of action. Um, in this particular case, I didn't feel like the author was saying, um, you know, that anything should or shouldn't be done, just that it doesn't always work out the way that it was intended. Uh, so, number 64 then. Um, the passage is Excuse me, the passage is clearly concerned with, so this is our main idea question, um, is it A, arguing against the increased internationalization of United States corporations? So here again, uh, the author wasn't arguing against anything, so no matter what came after those first couple words, uh, choice A really couldn't be right. Uh, choice B, uh, warning that the application of laws affecting trade frequently have unintended consequences, or has unintended con consequences. Singular, since the App, the word application is the subject of the sentence. Um, so, yes, there are definitely unintended consequences. In fact, um, that's more or less what happens from par paragraph 2 onward. So we'll save B as a contender. C, demonstrating that foreign-based firms receive more subsidies from their governments than United States firms receive from the United States government. What foreign governments do is outside the scope of the passage. It's not covered, and therefore there's no way it could be the main idea. And there we go. My pen froze. Okay. Uh, D. Is it advocating the use of trade restrictions for dumped products but not for other imports? Again, the author is not advocating one course of action or another, so um, that's not it. It's not advocating anything. Uh, e, recommending a uniform method for handling claims of unfair trade practices. The author doesn't really recommend anything either, um, let alone a uniform method. That's not something that gets mentioned in the passage. So that leaves us with B, uh, that uh, these laws have unintended consequences. On to number 65. It can be inferred from the passage that the minimal basis for a complaint to the International Trade Commission is which of the following. So it can be inferred. Um, that's about the most obvious way that they can tell you that it's an inference question. Probably the only more obvious way is uh, if it said an inference that could be made is which of the following. So it means that what we're looking for in the passage is almost stated but not quite stated. So it's almost there but not quite. Um, and the part where we hear about uh, businesses being able to make a complaint, I think that was towards the beginning of the passage. Um, yeah, so around line uh, 10, it says, um, even when no unfair practices are alleged, the simple claim that an industry has been injured by imports is sufficient grounds to seek relief. So we would want something that is a simple inference, a very uh, short logical leap that could be made off of that statement, I think. Let's take a look. Um, can we infer that the minimal basis for a complaint is a foreign competitor has received a subsidy from a foreign government? Again, what foreign governments do is not actually in question or even discussed in the passage, so it's all about the US government, so it's not A. Uh, B. Is it that a foreign competitor has substantially increased the volume of products ships shipped to the United States? Um, I'm just looking to see where something like that may have been uh, mentioned. Well, uh, so that, that certainly is a possibility of the circumstances under which a complaint could be made. However, we don't really have passage support for the idea that it's um, that it's an increased volume of products that may be what what triggers some companies to or what encourages some companies to file a complaint uh, but we don't really have support for that it's the simple claim that an industry has been injured by imports and it's without reference to the volume of those imports so I don't think we can infer that 
Actually, let's keep that one in the running because that's possible. Um, C, a foreign competitor is selling products in the United States at less than fair market value. So that gets mentioned right before in the previous sentence. It says another 340 charged that foreign companies dumped, quote unquote, dumped their products in the United States at, quote, less than fair value. So now, unfortunately, it's the very next sentence that says, even when no unfair practices are alleged. So dumping at less than, at less than fair value is considered an unfair practice. And apparently the minimum level for a complaint is below that, so it's not C. Um, uh, D, the company requesting import relief has been injured by the sale of imports in the United States. So that, that's what the part I read before sounds like, you know, uh, even when no unfair practices are alleged, the simple claim that an industry has been injured by imports is sufficient grounds to seek relief. So we'll keep that one too. Um, and then E, the company requesting import relief has been barred from exporting products to the country of its foreign competitor. Again, that whatever, we don't care about what other countries are doing. I mean, we do in real life, but this passage does not. So for, for these few minutes, we don't care what other, uh, what other countries are doing. So we have it down between B and D. We have um, the foreign competitor has sub substantially increased the volume of products shipped to the United States or um, that the company requesting import relief has been injured by the sale of imports. Of the two, choice D much more closely matches that bit at the end of the first paragraph that I read. There's really nothing about the volume of products, so we go back to eliminating B and we choose D.